Yeah, hello. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here again. And uh, I'm sending live from Germany, from Berlin, in my studio, in my artist studio. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to present tonight products of Faber Castell um, in the Inktober. Yeah, so it is about ink, about the pretty new dual markers. And the watercolor markers, these are the main tools with which I will work today. And before I start, I will switch all cameras to my um, iPad camera. And underneath here, I have some sketchbooks that I want to show you. Yeah? I'm an artist, I'm a um, traveler, and um, I mostly work in, in sketchbooks, and that's why I show you some sketchbooks. And now I try to switch to the other camera. Okay. And um, I will turn off my camera here that there are no problems. So here you see some of my sketchbooks. Um, hang on. So I turn off my camera. Yeah. Um, last week I have been in Tunisia. Yeah, this is the Arabic word for Tunisia, and I used this sketchbook. It's a Hanemühle watercolor sketchbook. Most of the time I work in this with watercolor, or here this is still in Berlin, the rainy Berlin, rainy day is yeah also one subject matter today I want to show you. Um, but then we came in the Sahara and uh, some of these sketches I made also with ink, with watercolor um, pencils, uh, no, watercolor markers, this for instance, yeah, these teapots. And um, before I um, start to draw on this sketchbook, maybe there's also interesting information, I covered the white pages with tea, yeah, this is tea here underneath. And then, um, and I uh, traveled into the Sahara with the tea covered sketchbook and put the um, drawings done on top of that tea. I did it with tea because it's um, a little bit yellow and it looks um, like Sahara um, fee or gives Sahara feeling here I'm back in Berlin. There the colors are turning into blue. This is one of my sketchbook. Another one, an example shows maybe also um, pretty much how I work. I work not so much in color. I work more if I use watercolor markers or other markers with um, values, tone values, yeah? Light gray, darker gray, black, and then some dots in um, color, yeah? That's why I choose that tools that I use uh, tonight, yeah, there are, and I will introduce this after the uh, after I show some sketchbooks, gray colors or here brown colors, but not everything, yeah. Uh, so there are less colors, but there are some dots, like I said, white which I cover. Yeah, this is a little bit uh, more cover uh, covered with color. But even here in the um, single um, sketches here, it's most of the time the brown scale, yeah? Or another, I made some marks here. Here also, it's more brown and warm gray and a little bit less of green. You can imagine if you, uh, if you are on a forest and you see that guy, there's much more green, much more colors. Here, a variation in blue. I made that in Berlin also light dark middle tones and then the primary colors yellow blue and red yeah and the others still uh, blue or here this train this historical locomotive train yeah um, i made also with the dual pens and these are more or less the tools that i use today yeah um, so if I work on toned paper, like this gray one, that's the gray book of Faber Castell, uh, of uh, the Hannemühle German company, then I use not only dark pencils or color on light paper, usually on white paper, you put just dark colors on that, and then you get the drawing. Um, if I use uh, toned paper, then I work also from dark to light, yeah, which means I put some white in this, yeah, 
This is also from the area where I live. And here I have um, toned watercolor paper. Yeah, in Germany we have that. I don't know if you have it in um, in um, Canada. Um, this is toned watercolor paper. Yeah, like yellow watercolor paper. This is in my studio. I prepared some pictures for an exhibition. Or here, urban sketching. Um, a bus. The buses are yellow in Berlin. Yeah. Or here, the train station of Berlin. Um, the same thing like before, just one color, brown, light, and dark, and then the primary colors, yeah, yellow signs or um, the um, blue signs there. Yeah, oh, I have here some more marks, yeah, or here's some small um, sketches from houses, yeah, um, and here, yeah, our dog, yeah, but also just light and dark browns on brown paper and then highlighted with um, white. Okay, and the last one, um, it becomes dark in Germany, rainy, it's a rainy day. I also want to um, draw with you a rainy day here. It's a Christmas, it was Christmas time. The Christmas tree is here, here, my wife and our son, our dog here, yeah are here from the fields also just brown my i'm one of my motorcycles here or here the dog is looking the white boar wild boars as it's called i guess yeah also in a dark area yeah so in a, on a gray paper yeah these are some sketches of that sketchbook okay these are some samples and now i want to introduce um the yeah, working horses for tonight. These are some pencils, watercolor pencils, some markers, watercolor markers by made by Faber Castell. I work a lot of um, um, with products of Faber Castell because it's a German brand. Yeah, and uh, I make some presentations and workshops for them. Yeah, and I work together um, or I connect that with um, paper by Hahnemühle. And um, I have now Britannia, I guess in your uh, list is um, the Harmony. It's another paper, yeah, but um, I couldn't reach the hot press. This is cold press, what I have here. But if I work especially with um, watercolor pencils, then I work with a hot pressed paper, which means the surface, as you probably know, is very smooth and not that rough like cold pressed paper yeah this is one thing um with which i or one things what with which i work often i um make my drawings my um, first drawings line work with a fine liner and then um if i use uh, the watercolor um, markers or the um, watercolor pencils then i work also with that uh, water um pencil yeah probably you know that yeah here um is a water in that brush um uh, not, not the watercolor pencil watercolor brush in that brush and um, you can change the color without uh to using a glass if you are water coloring and um in my uh, former life, I was a designer and sometimes I get some jobs for design as well. And so I got the opportunity to, to design that brush um, for Faber Castell. Yeah? And I'm very honored to do that. Yeah? And I put in all my knowledge, my experience, what I had to bring that um, to a great product hopefully yeah and um yeah we need some paper towels yeah um for cleaning the brush this this as well um that's the first um drawing that we make with that with with this and um i don't have a double but i use also white yeah um one is here that pit artist pens with the brush nib with um um, white color and then the watercolor pencil white um, and now I come to the second material that I have here this are the more or less new I guess in Germany they are on the market since a year one and a half something like that 
the um, pit artist pen dual markers. And uh, also here I have a light and the dark and I combine that with um, white as well because I'm working on um, or in um, sketchbook. It's a big sketchbook. It doesn't fit here um, on that um, on that um, camera. But if I put the camera more up, then um, the drawing becomes very small. But I have here another another one, the smaller size I used in Oman at the beginning of this year. Yeah, and um, there I used that brown paper to put my drawings on. This is in Germany. It's an A5 the size. This other bigger one is A4. You know the inches better. And here, this one is brown paper, and I covered that as well before I put the drawings in there. And I put uh, um, um, painted or I covered that with instant coffee, yeah, because it's very intense this color, and it even smells a little bit still. Um, like instant coffee yeah and i put the drawings in here not so much with um ink so with watercolor pencils more with what uh with watercolor markers more more with watercolor or with watercolor um pencils and like i said if i work on this um colored paper then i use white as well to get good results yeah but this is the same like this maybe i have a cover yeah i have a cover this is the cover of the cappuccino pad um in germany we can get it as a book cappuccino book or as a cappuccino pad yeah this is the pad this is this, uh, this like this looks the cover where i work in tonight and like I said, I have here a bigger size, yeah. Um, and I use this. And sure, we need a sharper to do that as well. Okay. Now I want to show um how I work with that, what's possible with the watercolor marker, and um, pretty much the same as possible um with the dual markers but um they are this these guys are water soluble yeah and they are permanent if they are dry both are water based which means it doesn't smell like alcohol like on usual markers like copics or pantone you know um probably yeah okay um, all of these markers, oh, the black one is not in the list, but I want to show you something with that as well, but it's not important for the drawing that we make, yeah, made, yeah, make, I uh, will make. Um, this is a great, and Faber-Castell um, is one of the only uh, companies in the art material world. They um, write on their uh, pencils and on their markers, if it's cold gray, or warm gray, yeah, here cold gray, here also cold gray. And I don't combine warm gray and cold gray um, by accident. If I do it, then I make it very, um, very clear, yeah. But here I use only the cold gray, yeah, and light and dark. That's very important. Like I said, yeah. Okay, I take the, the darker ones. This is cold gray six, they call it. Yeah. And um, you can do with the marker lines. It has this felt nib. And on the other side, if you switch it, you have the brush more to cover areas or to make um, like strokes, like with a brush, with a watercolor brush or whatever. Yeah. And you can flip it. And so you can change the size by flipping. This is very important for me for other things too, because usually I don't sit here on a table and draw. I stand outside, yeah, on the train uh, station or yeah, in the desert last week, yeah. And then I want to be very fast, yeah. And I have two sizes in one marker. And um, the other good thing is that um, with the brush size, you can change the size of your lines, yeah, small lines, big lines, 
And so the line gets really alive. So this is the first opportunity that you have the choice between small and big um, lines. Yeah. The other thing, and this is um, this is the um, reason to make that or to make it some uh, to to have here something special is that's a watercolor pencil, which means you can um, you can um, take some water on the brush. And then um, you can make it very light. Yeah. Usually on markers, you have white paper or the cover of the marker. Nothing else is possible. With a um, with this pencil, yeah, you move it, and if you put more pressure on it, it becomes darker. Yeah. This is able, or, or this is possible with this pencil or with this crayon with this dry um, pigment but this is wet and usually it doesn't work but here it works but if I want um, to have an, um, um, a dark area um, turns into white then you shouldn't do it this way what I'm doing because I move the pigments in front of my brush I still have here a gap be be between the white and this light gray. But if you do that the other way, if you wet first the paper and then come to the uh, to the color, then the color will disappear into white. You see the difference, yeah? Here you still have these um, gaps, uh, no, no, not gaps, this uh, steps in between, yeah? But here, if you cover or first the white paper just with water, water, and then you come up to the color, then you have here this dark to light um, line you know, or area. So this is possible to wet it. And this is not possible. If this is dry, like I said, then it doesn't um, move or you cannot do anything with that. It's just there, yeah. The third point is what I really like to do because it's a little bit slow if you take another tool, if you take a, a brush to make it smooth, the edges smooth, yeah. Here is it hard edge and here is it smooth, yeah. And that's why I often make it with this or also with the other um, dual markers that I take the paint on this and I just move it with my fingers, yeah? And I also get here soft edges, yeah? Usually if you just put it on, then you have these hard edges, but um, sometimes you don't want to have it, yeah? And that's why if the color is still wet, then I smudge it with my fingers and then it becomes this, yeah? It gets soft edges and uh, if I draw, um, a, a real subject matter a motive, then you will see how it works. Yeah, if I do it with my fingers. So with the brush, I can do it, and with the fingers. So now I take the light one, and I want to show you the following thing. Here I have a light color, and here I have black color. And if I want to have have something in between, I can take a third color. Or I just put it together. If I take here the color and I take the black, and so I get here an, um, um, an area from dark to light and something in between. Yeah, because it's water soluble, um, I can take it and put it to the light area. And the same. Yeah, the next point, this is fourth zone. And the fifth opportunity is um, if you have two, just two um, markers and, um, or I do it with the other ones. Yeah, I do it with these guys. Yeah, here you have a light color and you have a dark color. And if you want to have something in between, whoops, so then you can take the light one, take some pigments from here and put it here and you get something in between, yeah? 
you can take it from the dark to the light and you have a uh, color in between. Um, you can do that with the permanent markers, but also for sure with the um, watercolor markers. Okay. Um, like I said here and here, uh, sometimes you want to have soft edges. Yeah, If something is round, like if I put that page here, yeah, a piece of paper, then you see here uh, slowly um, dark or slowly covering of the dark. Yeah, the shadow is very soft. The shadow is very soft. Yeah, uh, if you have something round like faces or whatever, yeah, um, then you want to have that. And usually it's not possible to do that. You can do it this way or this way, but there's another way. You can um, color your thumb, yeah, this way, and you can print the color on the paper. And even with this possibility, you get soft edges, yeah, even this. I did it, I guess I did it. Maybe I will find it soon. I hope so. Um, with this train, yeah, with this locomotive, uh, yeah, here. Yeah, see here, this I made that way, yeah, that the steam is very soft, yeah, and you get that impression. With the watercolor markers, so this is the next point, it's the number six, yeah, number seven is if you cover um, the white paper with watercolor markers, you can kind of erase it with the water um, water brush and with this um, paper towel yeah if you make it this way and you take it off here is the co uh, color and it comes off it depends on the intense um, intensity of um, the pigments on the paper and for sure of the darkness and this will not um, happen with this color here. This is permanent. Yeah. Whoops. So this is permanent. This or this. But with the watercolor pop uh, uh, the watercolor markers, it's possible. Yeah. Another nice um effect is um to put some water on the color to create some splashes. Uh, my opinion is a drawing should look like a drawing. That's why I check out every opportunities, what's possible. And if I take that brush and I put water on top of this color, then here soon appears this splatters. Yeah, here. Yeah. And this is a nice effect to create some details in the foreground, for instance. Yeah. Um, I use that. You can also do it this way. Um, I guess, um, yeah, last time when I was here, I guess it's yeah, a long time ago in April, um, then I showed you the trick. Um, these are also watercolor pencils, yeah? And you can um, make these pigments here kind of liquid. And if you push then the brush on top of these pencils, then you create also splashes, yeah? I really love that, yeah? I do it a lot of times in yeah, more or less all of my sketches. Yeah. Let's see here, here, for instance. Yeah. Here I do it that way, like I have shown you here, yeah, or um, yeah, here as well in the foreground, yeah, of that uh, desert and you know. Yeah, whatever. This is also opportunity. And you can do that with this as well. But the water from here goes in, into the felt nib um, of the marker and pushes the pigments away. And if you do that, if you do it really strong, then it seems that the marker is empty. There is no color anymore. The color is coming uh, later uh, again. But um, it's possible, but I do it 
I don't do it that much, yeah, but you can do it the same like I did here. You can do here, yeah, um, with that, but we'll see. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter. Um, it needs some time till the ink is coming again to the nib that you can work with that. Yeah, and for sure you can use the marker also like um, um, watercolor box, yeah? You put some pigments here and you just take the brush and take the pigments from here and make your drawing, yeah? Make your sketch this way, yeah? Small little tree, yeah? So, but I don't do it that often because if you want to do that, you can take a watercolor box, yeah? You don't need that, yeah? But sometimes I take parts of the drawing, the dark parts of the drawing, and I take off the ink from there to cover other uh, parts of the drawing with a really light um, gray in this case, yeah? So this is also um, possible. So 10th point, and I have 11. The 11th is that you put um, first the water on the paper and if you put then the ink on the paper then you also create your smooth edges yeah here this is dry paper this is um wet paper and there is a different yeah okay this i want to show and uh, yeah now mm, Hang on, Skizzenbücher habe ich, Technik, Watercolor, Marker. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, if you have some question, now it's the time to answer. And I ask any if there are some questions. Otherwise, I would continue with the um, subject matters that I want to draw. Yes, we have one question from Pramila. Is It's about the coffee or tea stain. Do you have, um, like, how do you make it? Uh huh. Okay, I put this in the camera and I show you. Um, the very important thing is that you have watercolor paper. Yeah, like I said, this is the Hahnemühle watercolor sketchbook. It's not cotton paper. This is also on the market. It's watercolor paper, and you see it breaks a little bit here, here. Yeah, because I do it this way. This is watercolor paper. I take um, Roy Bush. Tea. It's the same in English. I hope so. Yeah. Because then it turns into this brown, red. Yeah. If you just take um, black tea, then it becomes gray. Yeah. But I want to have this Sahara feeling. Yeah. From the white paper. The paper was white like this before. Yeah. But then I put this tea on. I make a pot of tea and I put um, some kind of bowl. Yeah from the um, stove um, where I can put in the sketchbook and then I um, cover it with a brush, with a big brush, take a big brush here. So, so I take the tea and put the whole page with the tea, yeah? And then the tea will running into this gap here. That's why here it, it's marked there, yeah? And um, to avoid that it glues together, sometimes it glues together, but I try to avoid it. Um, I put something in till it dries, yeah? Like brushes or if I'm doing that in the kitchen, cutlery, yeah? a fork, a knife or whatever, yeah? So, and I do it like this way so that it doesn't stuck together or it doesn't uh, has the chance to stuck together, yeah? And um, after this, it will bend a little bit, but doesn't matter if you close it, yeah, more or less, yeah, or here you see that, yeah, it's a little bit bended, but it works, yeah. This is with tea, and if I, like I said, and we will have tonight as well, brown paper here, if I have that brown paper, um, the tea wouldn't work because it's too light. And then I take, like I said, this instant coffee, like here, and I do quite the same. Oh yeah, this is the first step, like I said, uh, with the tea, but here you see all the tea, the brown paper, but then I do a second um, layer and then 
I um, kind of paint the tea on here like this. If the first layer is um, dry to create things like this, dots like this or this here, yeah? Or where is it here and here, yeah? Or I just make splatter on um, the cover on the, on the first layer like this, yeah? And um, to make it more alive, yeah? Not just cover then if I want to have it just in brown underground I could take this paper yeah but this is too yeah how should I say it's not rough enough yeah um so this looks better like an adventure sketchbook yeah and like I said with the coffee I make the same but I guess here I put just one layer on this yeah and this, this is this this is not watercolor paper this is this cappuccino book that's a thin paper, I guess, 120 grams, yeah? And um, there it's also bending like this, yeah? And if it's too open, yeah, if it's too um, curvy and it looks like this, then I take off some paper, yeah? You don't, uh, so for instance, this book here has, if you buy it, uh, 30 pages, double pages, yeah? And um, if you, take this page for instance you can um rip it off yeah and you would see nothing if it's empty otherwise this drawing and this drawing would to would got, go together but before i guess here i took off two or three pages yeah that it is not too big to open yeah okay i hope i was giving an answer and you can work with that yeah is there that a was great Yes. Do you have a preference between cold or hot press paper for this technique? Um, in general, if I work with pencils, I love to work with hot hot press because, like I said, um, let's see if I have here a cold press. Yeah, this is cold press. Yeah, yeah, this is um, yeah, cold press. I will open it and I will show you the difference. Uh, between hot and cold press, because cold press means that it's a little bit, let's say, rough in the surface, yeah? And uh, hot press is smooth, yeah? Flat, like sketching paper, like Bristol or whatever. So, And um, it's not really important if you take markers, because markers, cover the gaps yeah cover the holes on the paper so this is the um, cold press this is the hot press but if you work with this pencils yeah with this crayons with this dry material yeah then you see here the rough surface and here you don't have that yeah that's why i love to work with um, hot pressed paper um especially like i said i work in sketchbooks uh, most of the time but there are not so many sketchbooks on the market with watercolor paper um hot pressed most of the time they are cold pressed like this what i showed you everywhere in germany you can get it yeah but if you put it put um this um dry pigments on this then you get this yeah and uh, here i want i like it because it looks like sand yeah but um sometimes i don't like it yeah for instance here yeah i would like to have it really smooth to have that um reflection of that cola bottle yeah coca cola bottle and there is smooth um, let's say hot pressed paper better yeah is it sounds okay good. sounds yeah? good Okay, then let's start. I will show you uh, the first um, subject matter. Yeah, or did I forget something? No, I don't, don't forget. Um, it's in my neighborhood. It's here a train station, um, a subway station actually. Yeah, it's a rainy day. Yeah, I did it a um, couple of weeks ago. This photo. Yeah, and, and um, this should be our drawing. Here are some people. And I'm going to show you later on how to sketch them. But first, I want to simplify this um, photo um, into um, a sketch um, in this way that I just use 
the gray scale of the watercolor markers and just one color more or less the yellow one that's why i choose the yellow one because the buses in berlin are um yellow so um and the first thing what i do is that i make a line work sketch with the um, black um fine liner yeah with the ink and this is waterproof, yeah. That's the same, the same ink, the other color, but the same like this. This is a fine liner. That's the marker, yeah. And here you have, uh, I have a size 0.3 millimeter. Here, um, um, we we have an um, size 0.8 millimeter. In Can in Canada, you have you know, also this metric system, yeah. Um, okay. Um, one trick for me, if I make a drawing is, and here you see uh, the finished drawing that I want to make now, yeah, you see, I have a lot of white space around this, yeah, and this is very important for me, a drawing looks very light if you have a lot of white in there, yeah, uh, I have one exception. If I make drawings of night sceneries, then I don't do that, but here I do it. That means on this big white paper, the first lines that I'm doing, and I do it all the time the same way, it doesn't matter um, what, I, what I draw, I make a square, and this square is my, um, um my space where i more or less work in yeah uh here is the main focus on that the next line is this is the horizontal line yeah if nothing would be on that um on that in, um, um if, if nothing would be there then this would be the earth this would be the sky yeah and um on this i put my uh ah, put the photo on here that you see what i'm doing yeah and how I simplified it. I showed it just from one side, yeah? And I bring on here that building and all the buildings or all what we are doing, we human beings, what we uh, build, if it is our cars or pencils or buildings, they are symmetric. The left side is like the right side, yeah? Um, one example, if you would cut this pencil in the middle, put on a mirror on there, then it would be there again in full size, yeah? Or even here, my watch, yeah? Cut it in the middle, the left side is like the right side. And then um, this has happened with a lot of things and this um, um, I use that I am in, um, if I make here the middle line in there, then I see this distance is like this distance yeah and it makes me uh, more much more easier to draw that building or that subject matter it doesn't matter what it is yeah and then i have here some old buildings they are taller taller than my um, size of my drawing and i draw the bus just from the side and another thing um, I do also, if I draw, I draw not just one line, I draw, you see it here, two, four, or five lines to find the right line, yeah. We have some wheels here, and we have here that black, black um, gap in there. These are two parts, yeah, they can move better around the um, corner. This is in here. We have the windows, these are the windows, and we have here the street like this. We have the entry to the train station, and we have, now I was only drawing um, man-made materials, man-made lines, a bus, a building, a street, and these are all straight lines. And um, I make a difference between the straight lines and natural lines, yeah, um, what's made by nature, for instance, trees. Trees are not straight lines. Even the trunk, I make a little bit curvy to have another uh, line like this, yeah? So this makes the contrast, this makes the um, drawing much more interesting. Okay, this is the first work that I'm doing. 
And um, yeah, I put right now, I put some people in there and I show you how. Um, I show it here. I've wrote several books about drawing. One is um, um, called um, How or Why um, Carrots or Humans are Car Carrots. This is titled in a, in a subtitle. And um, it's an easy way to draw people if you think not on people, if you think on car carrots. This is a carrot, yeah, with a little bit shadow on one side. The light is coming from here. Here is the dark side, the light side. Here are some hairs, yeah. And if I change a little bit this shape, then your brain um, believes that's not a carrot, that's a human being, yeah. If I put from this the hat, if I um, cut the root of the carrot to two roots just in the middle, that's the middle, A, A, same distance. And I put some lines, uh, some um, details out of this. Yeah. So see, and now a human being is coming up to me. That's a very easy way. Um, if I do it without that carrots, yeah, like this, this here goes out, and here the two roots instead of one, and there is the human being. Important, like uh, with the carrot, are the light sources. The light comes from one side and creates the third di dimension, yeah, like this, 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 and it becomes much more a human being and a human being comes um, not often alone we are social uh, beings and uh, we're socializing so i make the same shape again and here are two people yeah and um, i guess you don't imagine this are carrots yeah but this um, picture um, of carrots is i guess very simple to uh, lose the fear to drawing people. And now the next step, and this is important for drawing, I put the carrots on a line, yeah? On a, I guess it's in English the same word, laundry line, yeah? Small and big carrots on that laundry line, small ones, bigger ones, always one, two, three, not just one. So like this, and you see what's happened. These are people, they are far away or they are coming near to me, but the perspective is pretty easy and I guess it's okay, it looks okay. And the reason why this works is this is our um, the height of our eyes, the horizontal line, and everything what's on our high eye level stays on our, our eye level. Doesn't matter how far it is away. Yeah. If I put a kit on here, yeah, then the head is much more lower. And here, if it's far away, then it's not on one line because this is not the height of our eye yeah but if these are adults and we are adults then the heads are, are on the same size and uh, if it goes straight if they go uh, up um, uh, they are they are climbing a hill or they are going down to somewhere then it doesn't work but it works here and this i'm doing now on um, the sketch here yeah uh, if you imagine here, you see this is the eye level. Yeah, I could put a line on here, and doesn't matter how far the people are. If somebody is standing and waiting for the bus, the size is like this. The next one, and here, if he is on our side of the street, he's bigger, but the head is on this line. This line doesn't exist, but it's very important because it's our eye level. And our eye level, um, everything what's on our eye level is um, higher and everything what's underneath, below, it's then underneath that. So, yeah. And now I fill that with that persons. So this is the line work. And now I want to do 
the um, coloring and I cover that with the uh, watercolor pencils, more or less everything um, except the bus and except the sky, yeah? Because the sky is much, uh, most of the time, the high, uh, the, the, the um, lightest um, part in the drawing. But uh, anything else I cover with the watercolor marker. And I can now take the brush. The brush sizes are now, you know, that's a small one, that's a medium one. I only use uh, medium ones, but the Power Castell sent me the small ones as well, but I don't like it because these brushes are not that good in case of hairs, yeah? So um, a um, watercolor brush with um, natural hair is much more be better. Uh, but so that's why I take just the middle one. But um, the water tank here and here is very, uh, very uh, small. That's why I have always two. So now I um, make that wet and I take my fingers on the paper to make the edges here soft, yeah, like this. And I can do that very easily. I do two things now. Uh, first, I make the edges here soft, yeah, that I can, uh, that I have a contrast between these hard lines of the architecture and the soft edges here. And the second thing, what I do with my fingers, I make the paper dry. If I would um, do this drawing with watercolor, then I had to wait till the first um, layer is dry. But here with watercolor pencils and with watercolor mark markers, I do it that way that I put with my fingers the water and the color into the paper and I dry it. If I put it here on the camera, it's dry, more or less. Yeah. Okay. And then I can take the second um, color, the darker ones, and I put on the shadows. Underneath the roof is a shadow here also. Yeah. In the um door doorway here there is shadow as well yeah okay i put here the photograph on this that you that you see that yeah so here as well and some parts of the building by the sides are dark as well they are i take the brush part and the details i for the details i flip the marker and put it with the or i i draw it i sketch it with the felt nip, not the brush. So, and underneath the bus is shadow as well. Here is the shadow, the um, wheels and underneath because a car or a bus is like a, a flying square, yeah? like my hand here on the camera. You see a little bit here for my thumb, the shadow underneath and the same as with a bus. Yeah, so do every time do the shadow underneath um, a car, then it looks better, yeah? So I go on the top of this person here, doesn't matter, here the bus is apart with this folding connection here. That's the um, front of the, 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 the window front, yeah? And now I can, put this dark line away because here's the person in front of the bus by this, yeah? That's the good thing on the watercolor markers that I can take the color away. This works only by watercolor paper or some special uh, sketching paper, but usually it doesn't work because on soft sketching paper, the pigments go into the paper and it's not possible um, um, to put it all out again, yeah, because it's there fixed. It stuck into the paper. So we have here three windows like this. We have a watch there, a sign like this. And now I take, like I showed you before, 
I take this as a as a reservoir to put a little bit. Oh no, I I'm, I forgot here a part of the room. I will take here also, like I showed you. Sometimes I do it just with my finger. I don't use the um, brush if it has to go very fast. Yeah, then I just take the finger to take it into the paper like this. So. And now I take this as a reservoir and put some pigments out here, uh, some old uh, paint in there. So for the sky, the sky shouldn't be that dark. And that's why I take this one yeah, like this. So, and now I recover it again with the darker color like this. Yeah. Here also a little bit dark. So like this. And if you draw people, then um, there is one yeah, rule is a little bit hard word, yeah, but most of the time the underneath part is darker than the upper part. Yeah. So the um trousers, the jeans are most of the time dark. This could be red or yellow, whatever, yeah, but it's not usual to have a yellow trouser and a black jacket. Yeah, most of the time it's an up, uh, uh, other way. And that's why I can cover that with paint here, yeah? like this, yeah, and leave the, leave, leave the rest. So now comes the part where I take the color on this, yeah, and that's why I left it white to have a bright yellow, on here and on the buses in Berlin, the roofs are white. They have a white line on top and the yellow sides. Yeah, sorry, the uh, yellow cover. And you see the contrast here. Yeah. And um, I took this um, guys here. I could do this with marker as well, but I want to show this as well. Um, here, I do it this way that I don't have this bright color. And that's why I put it on gray. And then it's a little bit pale. Yeah, It's not that bright like if I would, it, um, on, would do it on white paper. I covered that with blue and so I mix it like this, yeah. And last time when I had here this Faber-Castell demo, then I showed in very intense the watercolor um, pencils. Today I'm concentrated on ink, it's Inktober. And on the shoulders of this, I show also some light parts, yeah. It doesn't go white uh, like the paper, but you can see the difference slightly, yeah, and that's interesting, yeah. And if I want to have a reflection, because we see, we're talking about a rainy day, and we see here some reflection, very, very pale here of the yellow of the bus, I put it also on the gray paper, and I have an idea of the color, yeah. It's not that bright color like this, but I showed a little bit here, also a little bit part. So, and now I want to show you how I draw the tree, yeah? Because I just made an outline of the tree like this. I can show you if I draw a tree, I make a, um, um, a border to the lower part. And now here I cover the upper part and then I put here the trunk in there. Then I flip the drawing because it's much more easier to um, pull the lines in this way instead of pushing that, yeah, then it becomes not that natural. That's why I flip the whole drawing like this. And like I said, these lines are not straight. These lines are curvy. This should look like natural lines and they contrast the straight lines from the building. Okay, here we are. Okay, 
Um, and it's a rainy day. We see here some reflection um, to see here some reflection of the people. I take the color underneath and I take the brush and re-wet it like this or wet it, make it wet, yeah? That it becomes not that clear in shape like the um, like the body of the person, yeah? Here the same, here I show a little bit the dark, the darks downer part like here. And I also make it wet to get it a little bit softer that it not looks that straight, clear, like the other part, like this, this, here, the same, yeah? So, okay. And um, the final thing is that I let it rain. If I put on top of the whole drawing, the whole sketch, some white lines, yeah? So here, also person like this, yeah? Some white lines. And I do it this way, like a next level, next layer, like this. Yeah. You don't see it that much, but you see it's raining. Yeah? And it becomes more interesting if I put also some black lines, not too much, but also on top of everything. Yeah, and here this cover, and I have some the absolutely space like you see here. And um, during I doing my sketches, then I get I I create some ideas. Yeah, now for instance, this idea to also make here some um, reflection, and this I showed you as well. Make it with the lighter part like this. Yeah, so now and I put here. Let's say, yeah, he will get an orange jacket. I put some red on this. And I take the white, uh, the, the, the yellow one like this. And I put it on here as well. Yeah. So it's a little bit intense. I take off the pigments so it becomes not that clear. And here I show also some details. So, and I'm still not at the end of my um, page, yeah, but I finish, oops, here's some yellow. I finish um, my drawing here. Okay, this was the first one. And I hope you enjoyed it. You have seen something, uh, you have learned something um, about the work with the watercolor markers from Faber-Castell. Like I said, they are, uh, you can use that dry, but you can also make it wet. You create a smooth edge if you flip with your finger or you, you, you smudge with your finger on that. But uh, one of the most important things is here as well, that I don't go to the edge. Yeah, I stay in the middle of my drawing. And you see that even in my sketchbooks, you see this, yeah? And then I play with that yeah? um, here, yeah? See, this is the subject matter, and here is just some space. Here's just some white space. Yeah, this is an addition of two um, sketches, but we'll see if I have, yeah, this for him was the cat, yeah? I don't draw till to the end, yeah? This becomes light because, because I had that space to put some dark on this. Um, but I don't, or, or here the same, yeah, you see here still some space around that. And here it's the same. Okay. Um, I would say I continue now with the second um, sketch, with the second drawing, historical uh, building. And um, then after this, if you have question, uh, write it in the chat. And I see there are a lot of questions, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I will answer that if I have finished the second drawing. Yeah. You have all the time to ask me question after this. Okay, this were the watercolor sketches. Now we can take this away. We take the fine liner away and the watercolor um, brushes. 
And maybe we use later on the watercolor pencils as well. And the white, we need two like this, yeah. And um, here I also show you a photo, what I want to draw and I make an, um, an landscape shape as well because it fits better into the camera. So this is the Berlin Dome, yeah? It's in Berlin. I took this photo in, in the summer and uh, this I want to draw, dry and <laughs> draw with you um, on tone paper. And I have, um, uh, I, I did it before in um, preparing this uh, demo. Here it is. And I used just the brown tones and some white, yeah? Like I said, if I work on tone paper, I not just work from light to dark, I also work from dark to light, but this this later on. Here we don't, or I don't want to draw a whole landscape like I did it before, or small landscape. Here I draw just one subject matter, what just one. And if I uh, draw just one subject matter, a church, a human being, a, um, an animal, whatever, then I put one uh, line underneath and I scale the size how high my subject matter will be. This dome here, this uh, cathedral, will be this size. Um, maybe you see here is a lot of space and here as well. And that's good like it is, yeah? If you see it here, because if I want to put a foreground here, you see here also the carrots on that line, yeah? And then I have space for that, yeah? I don't know um, how far I go. And so it's better to make the subject matter smaller than tall. I told you that architecture and everything what we human beings are mm, create, uh, it's symmetrical, the left side and the right side. It's the same with that building. Therefore, I draw in here a straight line. This is my middle line. On that middle line, um, I divide this distance in the downer part, this and this um, part on the top, yeah? This way, and now I can create it or I can draw it very symmetrical. This doorway here, and this line doesn't exist, but like I said, it gives you the um, secure, secureness, I guess it's the right, I hope it's the right word, um, that you are right, this distance is like this, this like this, and so on. But also it's good for the person who is looking at that sketch, even if it is not that straight, it looks straight, yeah? Because of that middle line, then it looks straight. I ignore the ellipses here, yeah? I look from underneath um, to that building, but first I keep it very simple, and for that reason, I don't do this difficult shape. Maybe later on I do that. Here are two side towers. This one on the right side. And there's this one on the left side. And they are a little bit more higher. Like this I have, has the same level like the main part. And you see, I just draw a lot of lines vertical and horizontal. And this creates deepness and atmosphere, yeah? So this looks then like a building. Not the first line is the right line, maybe the third, yeah? You see up and down, up and down, but the important is that I have a grid made of vertical and horizontal lines because this is our imagination of buildings. If sometimes in my workshops, I um, ask the participants, if I draw this, I draw this, and I ask them, ask them, what do I draw here? And the answer is, maybe you will give the same answer, buildings. These are just vertical and horizontal lines, but your imagination in town, a skyline, yeah, and, um, 
just by um, um, drawing these lines. And the same is it here, yeah, a little bit more detailed, yeah, a little bit more depend on my subject matter, but these are vertical and horizontal lines. And another trick is there are some details, um, uh, the church cross and some golden balls on the top here. Oops, so now it's sharp here and here. And if I do something like this on top, I do it not that way. I show you here as well that if I here, if I have here the top, not that way um, at the small towers that I connect that with the building. This is very hard, yeah? The better way is if you do that, that you're not connected, it's flying over that shape. See, here it's not connected. Your fantasy is connecting that, yeah? You don't need this, yeah? And this I do here as well. So I put it on top. Yeah, here the lines are a little bit long. Yeah, but I um, care about that to the cross here. It's flying on the top. It's not connected to the earth. Okay, um, then we have here a spring. Yeah, in the middle of that, we have a spring. That's a very light part. Yeah, and I want to show you how to put in that white spring here yeah like this or a fountain so okay and now comes the part or oh, here in the side the, 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 the background like i said this are buildings and yeah, this stands not alone in the world yeah here are some trees like this some trees in front and now i covered this all this like i covered the first um, drawing with gray here. I put gray on that, except the bus. Now I put this brown on there, everything. And here also I take my finger to take it apart or put it in every corner, except the fountain here in the middle except that like this so and i make it uh with that trick i make it a little bit lighter and i put it together you don't see the lines too much these are more spaces that i cover with the color with the lightest and the reason for me to have two colors here is to use after this, the second color for detailing that what I did here just very roughly, yeah? So like this, yeah? Here, I cover it well. Here are the bushes, so here, lines. And here, even here, I have a lot of space. Here, I choose um, very, um, Clear um, the center of my sketch, not in the middle, a little bit apart. Yeah, this has to do with the golden cut. Probably you know that if this space is less than this, it becomes more interesting. Yeah, the third um, part rule, I guess it's called. Now I take this white um, pit artist pen and cover the white with the first layer what I showed you at the beginning of this demonstration and I let it dry to put on later. This is, it looks a little bit white or it looks pretty white already because there are some dark areas around this and I will force that, yeah, when I take the darker marker here for that Put it here. Oh, yeah, here is the darkest part. Yeah. Um, and if I draw buildings, the roof of the building is a little bit bigger than the walls, which means that here 
is a shadow. Here is a shadow, yeah? And this creates the third dimension. The same here, if I have here the top, then underneath here is the shadow, yeah? We have here details, we have here some windows in there, this half ball it is, this is divided by sections. And what I'm doing now is I create a light source. The light is coming from here, which means that all parts on the dark side are darker. And the difference between this light and dark um, marker is really hard. That's why I take now here what I showed you before, the color from the darker marker with the top of the lighter marker and put it on. The same here. And it is not that hard. That's very smooth. If I draw here or put in the windows like this, they are really dark. Here I can take the dark sepia. Here also the darkness, yeah, the shadow. And here we have this symmetrical part. The left side is like the right side. We have here some columns like this. The straight lines like before. We have here some details. And the trick is to draw details without to draw them. And I do that just if I put some vertical and horizontal lines in here. Here I take that to make the shadow a little bit softer, yeah? If here the ink is still liquid, then I can move it on the paper. This paper is sketching paper, but it's really tough, yeah? So it doesn't destroys too fast. That's the good thing. That's why I choose that. That's why I choose also sketchbooks with that paper because it's not, um, it doesn't goes apart too fast. Here, the darkness of the windows. And even here we have columns that are just vertical lines. What I put in here, take in here and here also details without to draw that. And here are all small, here are figures on there. They are flying over these towers. Yeah. And this is also then creating um, details. Yeah. These are the level, the floor levels. I put in and here are some doors, side doors. They are also symmetrical. I put in this middle line. I draw in this middle line. So, and now I'm watching a little bit light and dark. So here is the darker part underneath and on the shadow side, like this, here, here, here. Here we have more windows, yeah, also a middle line in the tower. And there, are, like I said, it becomes a grid of lines and it's, this looks like details, yeah? Because it's very straight, even here, like this. And uh, the details are just coming up in your fantasy. I don't draw them. Exactly, but it looks very exactly. Yeah? So here, more darkness. Here, it's less light on this arc. And underneath this fountain, it's also there is a concrete ring where it is in, or a concrete wall around this. And now I come to this that. There are some trees on top uh, in, in front of this um, cathedral, like this. 
Yeah, and I do the same what I did at the other drawing. I draw it in an absolutely other way than the building. The building has clear uh, vertical and horizontal, but the tree doesn't have that, you know? And I do it the same with this one. Yeah, they are really loose shapes that I take. And like I said, from there is the light coming, which means here is a darkness in the trees. And it helps me to make a contrast to this fountain, to this white. And the white becomes more white than it is. Yeah, I don't need it totally, absolutely white. I just put some dark around it. And then it becomes really bright white. Okay, next step is um, that I take the white on the building, on the highlights. Here is the light, here is the light, here and here. Even on the windows, here on this part, here, here. And even on the trees, but on the trees, I also move the pigments on the paper to take it off a little bit and create not too light parts, yeah? It should not be white like that fountain, like that water. It should just be a little bit. And for that reason, this pencil is really good. It is not an acrylic pencil and it doesn't cover it too much, just a little bit. That's a good thing. And now I put also some um, people on this. Um, if you imagine here would stand, or here we see there are some people, yeah, see here, I put it in the camera, you see here also here is a man moving, yeah, here is also a man, and you see they have their heads on the same uh, level, yeah, on that line, yeah, it's a half of this fountain, pen, uh, fountain, like this, I draw in this line, and now I put here also some carrots on that line, on that laundry line for drying big ones, small ones, but the eye, the head is always on the same level. They are far away, like on that rainy day, and they're much more near. And I put this drawing or I this drawing gets more alive with persons, yeah. And sometimes I leave it this way, yeah. I leave it um, like lines, yeah. But what I'm doing, I put some casted shadow on here to create more lines, yeah, to have more lines. And the last thing what I'm doing is that I show that is liquid water here. Oh no, first I take, I put in the camera, more white on that white. So, and now I put some, some dots on here, yeah? That this becomes alive. This is water, the water is moving. And with this fine liner on the shadow side, I put also some dots on here to show that it's moving in water and not a white concrete block or something like that. Yeah, I do this on as well. And um, sure, I can cover this as well. I do it maybe with some persons, with some people here. And if I cover a dark side, then I put on a light side as well. And this I can do with that white pit artist pen, but it is not that white, it's just a little bit light, yeah? I like to um, complete that with some writing. Um, I'm gonna do that. And there is a trick if I want to draw straight lines, I put my pen in um, three fingers. Yeah, they are a little bit dark now because um, take the um, color here um, and two fingers I put here on that cover that's why I'm working with um, hardcover sketchbooks and then I can take the pencil 
or the marker, the fine liner, yeah, on the paper. And I create straight lines. And in the straight lines, I can write in this name of that building, Berlin Air Dome. Dome, that's the name of that building in the center of Berlin. And every line that goes down like this gets a double line. And so I create an pseudo 3D lettering like this. Yeah, I covered that with the brush. And it looks very straight. Like I said at the beginning of the presentation, if you put in a straight line in the middle, then it looks more correct. And if I put two lines underneath here, even this writing looks very, very precise. And um, the trick is one side is very precise. The other side, like this dots or this line or this is very unprecise. Yeah. And uh, this is the um, tension in between that drawing. Okay, this it was. One thing I put it in the camera, the rainy day with watercolor markers by Faber Castell, and one this historical building, this Berliner Dom, it's the exact um, name, made with the dual markers, pretty new, and here some less, very less. Um, watercolor pencils and this both um, or three, three uh, watercolor markers made by Faber Castell. Okay, now we have some time, a little bit time to, for answering question, if you have, if you have some, yeah, I'll put it in here that you can see that still, yeah, and um, that this it was. So do you have any question? So far, mainly praises in the chat. I can share them to you later. Uh, okay. If you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself now or write them or, in the chat. Not right now, they can also ask it uh, by um, turning on their microphone. Yeah. Um, I hope the um, um, connection is very uh, is is good. This is very important. Yeah, that I understand that. Yeah. Mainly praises. Oh, are the mark markers archival? They are what? Are the markers archival? Archival. What means archival? Uh, uh, like it can last centuries, <laughs> like last a long time. Like you can uh, no. Oh, I don't light know fast. This. Thank you, Nicole. Light ah, fast. So, ah, so light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, see, uh, I am often get this question. And um, this is the best quality. This are pigment based, yeah. So if something is um, light proof or whatever, um, then there are. But it's not my um, thing. I'm I'm not interested in that because most of the time I'm working in sketchbooks like here, yeah, and they are closed, yeah. So I don't bring the draw drawing most of the si uh, side side most of the time not um in connection with with light yeah and uh, i have to say most of the time if i make uh, commercial works then um i do it for companies they buy the rights to print my drawings not to put the original on the wall yeah that's why it's not that interesting for me but I'm pretty sure um, most of the time it is also on the um, cover of the um, paint or even here. Um, high, uh, what is high light fastness is your uh, printed on, yeah? So um, like I said, um, this is one of the best quality in the world. Yeah, I know also, or and I use uh, different kinds of markers or pencils yeah but um, um this is one of the highest quality and so this is um also a, a high 
security of light fast no 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 what's it what's the name lightness yeah of the light fastness yeah okay thank you very much yeah check out my instagram account every day i post a picture probably tonight this picture is here then you see can see it in good quality again on instagram mm -hmm. jens hübner put it together that's my account since 10 years i publish every day one drawing thank you thank very you. much